Prima Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Beer maker Heineken unveiled its grid-based 6.5 megawatt solar power plant at the company's Sedebeng Brewery in Midvale last month, which will supply 30% of its power consumption as part of the company's Brew a Better World strategy. Nadine Ramdas tells us more. The 19-hectare grid-based solar power plant project was in partnership with Solar Group and involved the construction of 14,000 panels, which will generate 17,000 megawatt hours yearly. The project forms part of Heineken's goal to be net zero in its production process by 2030. Heineken Regional Corporate Affairs Director David Patterson and Sustainability and Strategic Project Manager Richard Creel tells us more. We started this project years ago, so it's, uh, it has been a rather long and tedious process. Um, some of the, the challenges we had were originally, so if we look at the first phase, we took roughly a year to go on a full tender. Um, and the reason being is, is when you're going into a project this size, it's very important to have the right partner. Um, and so it really took us a long time to go through. We went through a number of different companies and iterations through the process to, to make sure we had the right partner. Um, as well as to go through the background checking in terms of financial. Uh, we know that it's, it's a long-term contract. You're looking for a 15-year contract, so you need to make sure that whoever you're signing with is, is able to sustain that and look, look after for that long. So if we look at the timelines, we took roughly about a year for tender. We then took probably another year in terms of the contracting and the PPA. So the actual PPA or purchase power agreement is, is quite a complex contract. Um, and also fairly new to us in South Africa. So it, it took us quite a lot of time with the local lawyers as well as our global team to kind of really secure that, that contract and make sure both sides were happy and covered from there. And then from there, we, we're looking at probably about a year in terms of just for once we had appointed then solar, we'd gone through the contract, a year for them to then secure the panels. Um, during that phase, we had quite a few challenges around availability of solar panels. So there was that uh, crisis that happened uh, in China around the availability of, of panels. So that, that was one of the things and Heineken was very adamant that the panels had to be tier one but also came from a, a good sustainable source. So it was at the time we had to really struggle to find the correct panels and in the meantime we also went through the licensing process. So getting sign-on from a municipality, a, agreement from NURSA and going through those processes. Um, so if you look at that, that's almost about three years before anything really happened. The plant was constructed in about seven months and began supplying power to the brewery in May following its completion. Heineken and Solar Group have entered a 15-year power purchase agreement. Solar Group owns and will maintain the power plant during the 15-year period. However, the plant itself has an expected lifespan of 25 years. The project fits into Heineken's largest sustainability goals. Heineken is a family-owned company. It's been around for over 157 years and we want to be here for another 157. And so sustainability is super important for us. Uh, we call it our Brew a Better World strategy and we have three pillars. The environment, social and responsible consumption of alcohol. So this fits very strongly, this project uh, in Sedibang, the solar power plant, into our environment pillar and into this net zero carbon uh, target. Uh, we have two targets. The first is uh, net zero in our own production by 2030, the things that are directly in our control. But that's about 10% of our complete uh, value chain carbon footprint. The other 90% is with our customers and our suppliers in areas like agriculture, in cooling, logistics and, and packaging. So this is a, a very big uh, uh, impact in our direct uh, carbon footprint. But we also hope shows the way to our customers and suppliers and other stakeholders that this is possible uh, and that we can decarbonize together for that broader target for 2040. While working towards its net zero target in the production process, Heineken has started discussions with its suppliers and customers to understand their carbon footprint, as well as how it can be addressed and subsequently reduced. The company has a goal to reduce its carbon footprint in its complete value chain by 30% by 2030 and will take bigger steps to meet its 2040 goal. We've got a number of, of projects that we're busy with the, the net zero and we also have a, a, a global project as part of the Brewing a Better World. So there's the net zero aspect as well as the water aspect. So that's about reducing our water. So 
the, the key is, is firstly around efficiency. So we're doing a lot of work to try reduce our electricity and thermal usage as well as water usage. So that's the first approach is to reduce and be more efficient in terms of what we do. Uh, the next is to then have a look at outsourcing and trying to find how we, we, we find renewable sources. Both representatives expressed their pride at having completed the project and excitement for the company's future steps towards a sustainable company. Today's unveiling is just a really proud moment for everyone at Heineken and, and mostly for the, for the team here on the ground in, in Sedi Beng in South Africa who have really put the hard yards in over the, the, the three years. It's really like uh, a proud moment for, for, for them. Uh, and it's a big step forward on the net, uh, net zero journey, um, not just for South Africa but also for the Africa region. As it celebrates 35 years of operation, private rail operator Traction is bullish about the future of the country and Africa's rail industry, with the hope that new policies will enable the company to build on the growth it has achieved thus far. Tasneem Bobulia tells us more. October saw Traction commemorating its 31st birthday, with the operator noted to have grown from small beginnings to become a considerable player on the continent. Traction CEO James Holly expands. So the company was formed with uh, on, on the exit from South Africa by General Motors. And uh, one of the service agents, whose name was Roy Puffett, decided that he was going to establish a small company to maintain uh, the locomotives that uh, were still in the fleet, the General Motors locomotives that were still in South Africa at the time. And uh, he started the company with an Isuzu Baki and a, and a toolbox. And uh, today, over many years of development and some significant investments by our new shareholders, we now have a business um, that is what it is today with more than $100 million of assets. And, and, and uh, we think the largest private operator, private independent operator on the continent. Holly outlines the company's investments in the country. So in terms of capacity, we've uh, invested in new trains, uh, locomotives and wagons, and we've invested in this workshop complex. We've invested in total about 600 million rand uh, into new locomotives and wagons and, and the workshops. So that's what we've invested into capacity. Um, what we've invested into in terms of competence is our people. Um, in order to be able to succeed in railways, you need outstanding assets that are very well, well maintained. But first and foremost, you need outstanding people. Um, and in a skills short environment, in order to be able to ensure we have really outstanding people, uh, we've developed our rail school. Our rail school is more than a decade old. Uh, we, QC, uh, we, we TETA and QCTO certified. We've trained more than 75 Red Seal technicians and more than 700 drivers in our rail school, as well as training in a number of, uh, of other modules that we use to continue to improve the services that we have. So, so that's how we've invested into competence. Holly also expands on the company's outlook. We are now investing significantly into technology into maintenance systems, operations systems, train risk mitigation systems, check systems, procurement, people management, and stock systems. But why are we doing this? Well, it's because we believe in the future. We believe in what South Africa and the rest of Africa could still be. We take a great deal of meaning from what we do. Our reliable trains create confidence in our customers. That confidence unlocks investment. Where we employ 50 people, a new mine employs 5,000. Where we invest billion, uh, millions, the upstream economy invests billions. Network industries, which is what we are, are what make a nation's economy internationally competitive. We are the foundations of the economy, but not the economy itself. The railways only exist because of a productive economy. Holly also touches on the importance of the recently approved white paper on the national rail policy. I think it's hard to underestimate the importance of the new white paper into national rail policy. Um, as uh, as uh, Acting DG Makai Pia said to me just now that it's the first rail policy that South Africa has ever had and that's incredible when you think that trains have operated in South Africa for more than 160 years. Our, our, our installed rail base is absolutely enormous. Uh, we have about 85% of Africa's rail trackers in South Africa and, and yet its utilization is very, very low. 
Um, the impact on the South African economy has, has, has just been published by Jan Havenge from Stellenbosch University is approximately 5% of GDP. But, but that's what's, what we know the impact is now. That's not uh, what, we, what hasn't been invested in because we don't have the rail capacity. So by growing rail capacity um, is enormously meaningful for the upstream economy because it uh, unlocks economic growth and is extremely beneficial to the state because it will generate this, um, this material income stream in, uh, in access fees which can go towards the, the maintenance burden associated with having to maintain this huge installed rail track base. That's Cremo Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.